guests today are the stars of Bravo's Million Dollar Listing Los Angeles. You probably already know that. Their no-nonsense approach to closing deals coupled with an extensive network of high net worth international and domestic clients have enabled James and David to reach a steady incline in sales year over year, including many landmark properties and record setting deals in the luxury real estate market of Los Angeles. With a current listing portfolio, I have to check this, I don't know if this is still true, of 1.5 billion. One point well, five. It's still true. Incredible. Includes some of the city's most prestigious and well-known properties. Their exclusive clientele is comprised of countless celebrities, producers, business managers, agents, heads of Fortune 500 companies, among others. James and David have proven that their exceptional service and attention for a- each and every one of their clients is the recipe for the team's success. Uh, James and David have also launched a newsletter called Blueprint, which we're going to be talking about. But first, guys, welcome to the GPG Mastermind this week. Happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And yeah. by the way, I cannot believe you interviewed Goldie. Sorry. I grew up listening to Goldie on the decks and mm. uh, everybody should listen to, to David's episode with Goldie. I mean, that's a cool one. I don't even know how you thought about getting him on your. Oh, I grew up with them too. That's I awesome. grew up with them too. I used to DJ. So he was, uh, he was always on my turntables, but you know, he's, he's like, um, He's like catching mercury. He's very hard to nail down for an interview, as you can imagine. So it was it was a lot of fun. It was really, really good interview. Talked about working with David Bowie and, uh, you know, KRS-One and, and of course, you know, the movies, everything he's been involved in. He's a he's a cool dude. So, um, yeah, it's going to be fun. Well, welcome here, guys. Uh, happy to have you. We were excited to have you guys for a number of reasons. Always seems like you guys have like a really cool project on the go, you know, like Blueprint. Um, uh, you have the new season of the show, I think, coming up, right? It starts filming this month. Is that true? Well, can't discuss that today, but... Well, what season is it, James? Yeah. <laughs> well, season 13 just finished airing, I believe. Right, Dave? I think it was 13. I, um, I think I've lost count. I'm, I, by the way, I'm really sorry about my camera. I really... It's not normally this dark in the office. I actually came to the office specially rather than do it from home because it's always dark. So... I hope you can see me still, so I apologize for that. Um, I don't know what season. It's been, it's probably 14. 15, 13 14. seasons. 13 yes. seasons. And can somebody get uh, David a ring light maybe? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what's that? Oh uh, man, but 13, wow. 13 years of, uh, is that 13 years? Just 13 seasons, I guess. Uh, we started, to be fair, we started season seven. Uh, so seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I think last season was season 13, wasn't it? So maybe this is season 14. So I think this could be, this could be our eighth, whatever. It's been a while. It's been a long time. It's been over a hundred episodes. It's been a while. James's voice hadn't even broken when we started. So (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Well, hey, listen, you know, uh, what we say here is success leaves clues. And you guys are such a great example of that, you know, of working hard, being tactical and intentional when it comes to growing and scaling your business. So the first question, guys, Current state of the union, uh, broad stroke thoughts here and what we've seen in the industry over the past year and so far in 2022, it's been a hot market, unlike anything we've ever seen. We all know this, but the real question is, is this housing boom, is it a bubble? That's the question. So I don't think it is a bubble, actually. I think, you know, you're always going to hear different economists come out with different opinions. Uh, That's what makes the the world go round. But I think if you compare today to 2008, when we hit the the subprime mortgage crisis, there was a lot of toxic debt out there. The banks were loaning to anybody and everybody. And then if you haven't seen the movie, The Big Short, I think that was a great representation of what was going on in the credit crisis versus if you fast forward to today, there is real money out there. There's real wealth, real money. The banks are still strict on who they're lending to. Um, look, it's gone up uh, at a rapid speed. Obviously, we all know interest rates at a, are at a record low. People are definitely taking advantage of the, the borrowing ability. But then, of course, there's no inventory, right? And then, of course, we've had COVID and people have seen a major lifestyle change in, in their own lives. So I think if you look at all of that coupled together... Yeah. Um, As real estate agents, we are sitting in the best position right now. And I uh, strongly suggest to everybody that we're all taking advantage of the market because I don't think it's a bubble, but I do think it could cap off and potentially slow down as interest rates rise. So, yes, I think, uh, you know, take advantage now, sell as much real estate as you can um, and don't come back crying that you didn't do enough business when the market was hot like it is now once rates start to, to go back up. Mm-hmm. 
that's a good summary. I, I like that explanation. That's good. Uh, I, we, we agree. Uh, now, besides the actual market, what's the biggest changes you've seen to the industry uh, since COVID started? Last couple of years, you know, a lot of things went virtual, of course. Uh, maybe trends you're seeing in the last year? I mean, I think, I think people are uh, looking for different, uh, different things in their, their homes because they're spending a lot more time there, right? So a lot of people working from home. Um, so home office is very important. And then we kind of saw that shift, you know, a while ago, it was all about like, oh, I'm going to buy a remodel or I'm going to build a new house. This is a developer speaking, by the way. Um, they would say, um, I want an open floor plan. I want everything open. I want to knock that wall down. I want to, you know, knock this wall down. And, and, and basically that's kind of to a degree remained, but people want a little bit more compartmentalization because if, if entire families with the homeschooling at one point, but you know, people's mindset is different, spending all this time at home, they want a little bit of separation. I mean, I remember personally when, when it all happened and we were in lockdown and, and my daughter, who was probably two at the time, um, literally I was on my phone or doing what I was doing and she'd be following me and chasing me around. I, I mean, I love her, but I had to do some work as well. And she thought it was like a game of hide and seek, but I was literally like running for my life. Um, so, so I think that compartmentalization um, and people want, I think amenities have become really, really important as well. So people want the home gym, they want the theater, everything they can get, right? Um, these amenities, the compartmentalized floor plan, the office, all these things have become really, really important. What's the, in your market, you know, the luxury, you know, the high net worth client, what's the most requested amenity? God, we're seeing it all, but I would say wellness. You know, wellness has been a big one. The, the sauna, the steam, the haman, uh, having the, the luxury of being able to have a massage at home, having a home gym, you know, that is definitely a requested amenity. But now through COVID, it's been, you know, where can my kids homeschool? Uh, I need two offices, not one. I want a gated property. I want, you know, they're looking for different things than they were before. But I would definitely say wellness is, is a big one, certainly uh, in Los Angeles. And I have to assume pretty much everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. OK, uh, let's get into the meat of it here. Uh, this is a big question. Any thoughts on how agents can acquire listings in a low inventory market? Any tactical advantages you can think of to attract sellers or find inventory for buyers? That's the question everybody's asking. Any thoughts on that? I think you just got to go back to basics. Um, you know, there's no real formula in real estate. Uh, people think, you know, how do I do it quick? How do I get there? You know, is there a trick? There's no trick. It, it's, it's literally sticking to 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 the basics it's rolling up your sleeves it's getting to work um whether it be door knocking which we can get into that a little bit later because that's how we really that, that played a big part into how we started off um sitting open houses just getting leads right and 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 just really hunting for them because yes it's very much a seller's market right now um the key is definitely holding the listings um, but I think you just got to work that much harder and you've got to be that much more proactive as far as whether it's networking uh, through people that you know anyway, getting referrals, door knocking, sitting open houses, picking up leads um, and basically just doing everything you would normally do, but just even more so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, well, good advice. Um, any thoughts on on, on agents, what they can do with buyers that are maybe dragging their feet, or maybe they have burnout, you know, writing offer after offer, um, you know, because of lack of inventory, they're not getting it. Uh, any, any words of advice for agents that are getting a little bit of burnout or, you know, uh, buyers that are losing the momentum, right? Because they're writing offers and not getting the properties. Get used to it. Get them used to it. That's the market that we're in right now. You know, I think in this business, you have to look at the glass being half full or half empty, right? And every time something doesn't go your way, you look at the glass being half full. I think you need to change the mentality, not just as an agent, but as an agent representing a buyer. You need to explain to them that this is the market we're in. You need to preempt what's going to happen so that when it happens, A, they're not let down, but B, they're even more excited to get to the next property. I think 
think every offer that you write on behalf of a buyer, you need to have a clear strategy in mind. You need to speak to the agent that represents the seller, find out what's important to the seller, find out the terms that are going to make sense to the seller, get two steps ahead instead of being five steps behind. Don't rush the process. Understand who the seller is, write a nice letter, give yourself the best shot at getting that house and get as much information together as you can. If the property is a million dollars and you know there's going to be 20 other offers and some of them are a million two, a million three, well, then you know where you need to write. Escalation clauses. I don't know if they're used out in Canada. They're big here in, uh, in Los Angeles. You know, put into your offer that we will go 10,000 higher than a million four, set a cap. Create yourself uh, a situation where it's very hard for the seller to say no to you. In terms of preparing your buyer, I think you have to just go in with a positive outlook, keep the buyers positive. And if they lose out on that house, I always say to our clients, you know, if it doesn't happen, just wasn't meant to be. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You know, it just wasn't meant to be. But then the next one's going to be even better. And then when we do get the right house, that was the one that was meant to be. And I think it's just about keeping a positive mindset, a positive mentality uh, and doing the best that you can for your clients and keeping them engaged and keeping them under the ether, which is that interest rates are low right now. Use that low interest rate to your advantage to keep the buyers engaged, because six months from now, that 2% 10 year interest only loan might be 3% and that changes your monthly payment. So always look for reasons of urgency to continue engaging with your client and, and keeping them excited. Um, yeah, that's super good advice. Uh, setting expectations, uh, you, you know, that, that's critical. And then keeping realistic the, ones, realistic yeah. expectations yeah. where where you're not over promising and then under delivering, you know, you've got to set the stage and, and not set yourself up for failure either. Yeah, it's super important. I mean, you're going to save yourself a lot of heartache if you just prepare your clients ahead of time <laughs> instead of playing head shrink every time they lose one. Are um, you guys getting these crazy multiple offer situations in Canada? Is that the deal over there as well? Yeah. It, again, it's regional, right? So uh, yeah. we, we have noticed a little bit of a slowdown in Toronto. Uh, you know, they're not buying houses like hot dogs necessarily, but why, um, why is that? Why is that? Do you know, uh, we had a rate hike uh, for one yeah. thing. I think that a lot of the, uh, the pent up demand and the, you know, the, you know, $5 million cash buyers have kind of worked through the system now, I think. Um, oh yeah. Bronco. Yeah. He, he works in luxury there. Inventory's way up as well. So that's, and that's, that's so a little interesting. How, yeah. How, how did that happen? What was the, just really quick, what was the cause for the inventory um, increasing? I don't know. Uh, Bronco, maybe you can touch on that. We'll let, we'll let a little bit to do with the spring market starting and uh, you know, everyone's seen their neighbor selling for, you know, a million five where just two years ago it was worth 700. Right. So a lot of people are cashing out and yeah, yeah making, making big moves. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. Yep. So the market's caught up, uh, you know, there, uh, in certain pockets again, regional, but you guys had touched on this. I think it's important to, to talk about for a second here. Um, you know, as an agent, your relationship with other agents make or break your business, right? Uh, you know, both David and James, you both mentioned this. So, uh, why is that? And what tips do you have to maintain those key relationships for success? They're so important now that's becoming clear, right? Your relationship with other agents. Really important. Firstly, you want someone to know that if you're on the other side of the deal to them, the other agent, right? That it's going to be straightforward, smooth, and, and, and easy because listen, the buyers and the sellers, they can really complicate things alone. But if the two agents are burning heads, that's even worse, right? Uh, I, I always kind of pride myself. It's like cards on the table. I don't think it's about winning, uh, uh, you know, again, at someone else's expense when I'm negotiating with, with another agent. I think everyone needs to win for the best deal. That, that's genuinely how I think. And I'll make it very, very clear with any agent on the other side. I'll say, look, I'm going to be open book with you. We both have a job to do and we want everyone to win. Okay. Cause that's, that's how it should be. Um, and, and I feel that that can really, even the most stringent agents, the toughest agents, they drop their guard at that point. Right. Because we need to be clear that we're working as a team. We're not working against each other. And once those got that guard has been dropped, it's so much easier to transact and everything works so much better. Um, and again, look, at the end of the day, every transaction we do, there's going to be an agent on the other side. So it, it just proves how important those relationships are and how they should be maintained. And, and, and frankly, you know, keeping 
contact with the other agents and having relationships with them. The information is incredible. Every time I meet with another agent, whether it's lunch, coffee, or just bumping into each other and having a conversation, sometimes a deal even comes out of that, just from the information we're sharing with one another. Because that's what we do all day long. We're all plugged into the market. They're going to see things we don't see. We're going to see things they don't see. And, and that information is absolutely crucial. Um, so, mm. you know, from every every angle, transactional, informational, deal-making, it's it's super important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fundamentals of uh, networking, right? It's important, uh, especially in a market like this. Now, uh, the other thing that agents are doing more of now because of such low inventory is what you guys, I, I would, is it fair to say you cut your teeth on, which was door knocking, right? Uh, you guys started really uh, door knocking. Any tips you have to, you know, drive leads, grow your network when it comes to door knocking? Do you guys do door knocking? Is that a common theme in Canada? Is yeah. it something that is done? I mean, I personally, to this day, believe there is no better tool in this business uh, to gain uh, listings other than door knocking. First and foremost, guess what? It's free, okay? You don't need to spend $5,000 and take a full page ad and you don't need to do anything other than give time, right? So for me, door knocking is all about your mindset. It's all about your mentality. It's all about having the glass half full attitude when you go out and do it. First and foremost, if you're not consistent, you might as well not do it. If you're going to do it today, but you're not going to do it tomorrow or the next week, you might as well not do it at all. It's a numbers game. It's a pipeline business. And it's about door knocking till you get a positive response. It's about door knocking and understanding that if you door knock one street, you go back and door knock that same street again. You do it again and again and again. And it's your energy when you door knock. It's contagious. You have to think if you're door knocking today, someone's door knocking that same person tomorrow or within the day after that. Therefore, your energy has to be right. Your mindset has to be right. You need to look good. You need to feel good. You need to understand what you're going to say, how you're going to say it, how you're going to respond to objections. And I think if you go to that door with the right attitude and the right level of positivity, don't give the seller a reason to, to, to turn, turn you turn away. away. And I think it's all about engaging with the seller, right? Giving them a reason to respond to you. You know, so we used to door knock teardowns, for example. So we would door knock large lots that had small houses that were primed for redevelopment. And our pitch was always the same. We'd rock up to the door and say, we've got an amazing client who's interested and motivated by this property's location. They don't need to see the interior of the house. Would you be interested in selling? And of course, they start by saying no. And then you say, well, there's got to be a number in mind that you would sell at. And then the greed factor comes in and they start thinking about it. And the longer you can sit there and talk and engage, the better it is. And even if at that moment they're not willing and ready sellers, get to a point where you're giving them your business card, you're giving them your telephone number, you're giving them their, your information so that down the line, they may decide to sell. They may have a friend that wants to sell. They may have a relative that wants to sell. They may have a neighbor that wants to sell. Give them a reason to remember you so that they go find your card, go find your number and come and hit you up when they're ready to go. And again, it's all about your energy and your mindset because if you go in with a negative mindset, that's not contagious. People don't want to be a part of that. They don't want to be around that. But if you go in with excitement and passion and belief and information and knowledge, it's going to be very hard for somebody to turn you down or turn you away and not want to know more. So my best advice is positive energy, positive mindset, be a wealth of knowledge and information and go with a sense of urgency and a reason of urgency and be consistent, remain consistent, and you'll be blown away with, with the results after a 30, 60 day time period if you remain consistent. That's awesome. That what a fantastic breakdown. Um, speaking of mindset, you know, I think it's critical. And I mean, we know this, right. It's critical to be able to handle rejection, right. When prospecting, like, why is it so important to be able to handle the no's not to be too cliche about it, but why is it critical, critical to handle rejection and no's when you go door knocking or prospecting of any sort? Cause you're going to get a lot of them. <laughs> uh, the reality is it's, it's, it's so important to to have thick skin and know that as long as you are keeping keeping going you're not giving up right mm -hmm. but for me it always comes back to like there's always going to be a lot of no's in any industry but when i personally first went into real estate 
I looked at, and we actually, we looked at the other agents. Who is at the top of the game? Who is doing it, right? They've proven how successful you can be in this industry. And I thank them for it, right? I, I can name a handful of top agents that I looked up to personally when we first started up in LA, and it's Kurt Rappaport, it's Jade Mills, it's Mauricio Yamansky, it's Drew Fenton, Brandon Williams. Like These people were, were people that I, I idolized but looked up to because they paved the way, and I'm sure someone else paved the way for them before as well, right? But what they showed me personally is that this can be done. You can be hugely successful, and that is the only information I needed to know because the only excuse for not getting to that level is either we're going to do something wrong, which obviously we're going to do, but we can learn from our mistakes. That's the beauty of experience, right? Um, doing something unethical, which we typically don't do, what we don't ever do, um, and not working hard enough, right? Those, those are just the three factors that can stop you from getting to the top. So, so we're not reinventing the wheel. We are doing very similar to and obviously everyone has their own spin and their own you know way of doing things, but we are doing pretty much the same thing as these top agents did that paved the way for us, and hopefully will pave the way for other agents in the future, right? But but that is it. The logic is there. There are successful people in this industry. Anyone can be as successful, if not more successful, if they don't give up and they and they and they stay to the formula. And take, the nose, that. take the nose as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's going to be so many of them hey david before your next question here how many of you can i see a raise of hands from the people that have cameras on how many of you actually do door knock definitely one two three okay we got to get more people's hands up because i'm telling you we founded our business off door knocking we did it every single day we started in this business with no contacts no nobody nothing and I'm going to give you a quick one. We just, and this is actually really important. We, in 2013, in April 2013, we went out door knocking. And you know what? This is such an awesome story because it just came back around full circle. We door knocked a tear down exactly like I just told you. And David and I used to make it fun. We do it together. We do rock, paper, scissors for who was going to knock the door. And this one particular door we happened to knock together um at a cul-de-sac on perugia way you guys can look it up 675 perugia way and it was a thirty thousand square foot lot there was a one bedroom 2700 square foot square foot mid-century uh modern house on it long story short we door knocked it we sold it for 6.5 million from a door knock to a developer we just last Friday closed that transaction as a 15,000 square foot new construction home, and we closed it for 37 million. And that's seven, eight years later. And thank you, David. But you know what? The reality is, I'm telling you that because we know it works. It's a proven and tested strategy that people use today that works. And I will give you a cliche. If you go into the mindset every time you door knock and every time you hear the word no, instead of it beating you down and bringing you down, every single time you hear the word no, you're closer to a yes. Mm -hmm. Think yep. about that for a minute. That's an mm -hmm. unbelievable, that doesn't have to be in door knocking. That can be in your everyday life of selling real estate. You know, mm -hmm. every single time you hear the word no, you're closer to a yes. And once you inherit that mindset and you have that mentality, boom, you can go out and kill it because then you're not afraid of rejection. In fact, the rejection only motivates you to be more successful and to get that next deal. Fuck it. No, who cares? Great. Bring on the nose. Let's go for the yeses. We yeah. don't have the fear inside of us. We can't afford to have fear in this business because the fear will bring you down and another agent will come right in and swoop up right behind you and take that deal. There's no time for fear. OK, you've got to have the faith. You've got to have the willpower, the belief, the energy, the courage that you can be the best in this business. And so I'm telling you, whoever didn't raise their hand for door knocking, get out, door knock. And uh, let's come back and do this again in, in six months and hear some of your stories, because I'm telling you. Wow. From six and a half mil to uh, 37. That's a mic drop. That's a mic drop. Beautiful Boom. Mic yeah. drop. Because, yeah. guys, I'm telling you, it works. You mm -hmm. know, it, it, it does. And there's no rocket science behind it. You know, it mm -hmm. was uh, it was a teardown. A developer bought, bought it, built it. We got the listing on the back end. Usually developers will be loyal to the person that brought them the deal. 
right? Mm -hmm. So if you can bring them the deal, you get the listing signed on the back end, you'll see it through from A to Z. And I'm telling you that six and a half million, a great fee there and another great fee on the back end at 37. That's a lot of money. That's not a joke. So it does work. We know people that still do it today. We would do it more if we could, if there was time. We still do it periodically, but it works. So please, I urge you all to go out and do it. What a breakdown. Uh, fantastic. Now, we all know that listings, like once you get a listing, that's the best lead generator. It really is. So really is. Uh, what do you do to leverage listings once you get them? Do you do the mailers? And what, what do you do to uh, leverage those? That's your time to shine. I mean, that yeah. Yeah. I remember someone telling us when we got our first listing, they go, even on the open house, right? Put as many open house signs as possible. Just because that's just another excuse to get your name out there, right? Mm. And, and let everyone see, um, you know, your brand, your name, and get familiar within that area that you're farming, right? Um, you know, sit the open houses. We used to sit, I used to, I'd sit a broker's open. I would sit anything, and, and even if it wasn't busy, because it just takes that one person to come through the door, right? But I think single-handedly, you can build a business just based on sitting open houses and, and using your own network. Literally, that's it. The rest of it, if you want to door knock on top of it, if you want to market yourself with mailers, et cetera, et cetera, uh, I mean, literally, that's great, but, but it's, it's, it's enough, basically, to build a business. That's how strong having a listing is, to get your name, your brand, meet people with the open houses, do the showings, get direct buyers that may buy your listing. If they don't, sell them something else. So, so, so I think it's hugely important. That's why we've got to put so much time into getting listings. Yeah, I think it's important to leverage listings and leverage listings off market as well. I think that's critical um, to drive business. Now, here's a question. This is interesting. Uh, every seller in this market thinks their home is, you know, uh, equal to the Taj Mahal, right? <laughs> right? Uh, how, do you, how do you help sellers set a realistic expectation on maybe their list price and sale price for that matter? That's a great question. What's the typical price point that you guys are dealing with? Oh, geez. Uh, I mean, well, we were going to use 2 million as an example. Uh, yeah, let's use let's, uh, East Coast. Let's go, yeah, 2 million. Let's do it. You know, I, I'll tell you what I've been doing and it's been working and it's actually the absolute truth to the reality of what's happening. You know, when you go for a listing meeting and the property is worth $2 million and the seller tells you, well, they think it's worth three, happens every single time. You know, I give them the reality of how the market is today. You know, two years ago, if your property was worth $2 million, you would list it at three and somebody would come in and negotiate and you'd end up settling at around 2.2, 2.3, 2.4. That's the way the market was two years ago. Fast forward to today and you have a $2 million property. The best strategy that you can do, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, is underprice the property at a million nine 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 fifty, drive up the price in multiple offers. The reason that you're seeing 15, 20, 25 offers isn't because the market's inflated or it's on fire it's that the pricing strategy has just changed. So in order to maximize the biggest and highest number for your house, we have to do things in the reverse. We have to underprice it because two years ago, you would have got 2223. But if you price it at a million nine 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 fifty today, you're going to get 20, 25 offers and you're probably going to get 2324. So you're actually going to get more money now by doing the reverse. And then once you do the reverse, A, you get the listing, B, you're setting the expectation and C, you let them know that, hey, it may or may not happen. We don't have a crystal ball, um, but this is what we're seeing. This is what we're expecting. And then that way you're testing the market, you're testing the price strategy. And by the way, if they're not serious and they don't take your advice and they still want 3 million, then you have to reconsider, do you even want this listing? Because mm -hmm. a listing takes time and the power of actually turning a listing down is sort of the, I think, the ultimate key to success. Don't waste your time on a listing that's never going to sell. Don't put your time and energy into a listing that the second or third broker is going to get six to eight months down the line at the right number. Get it at the right price in this market. You've got to take advantage of the market, the low rates, the low inventory, and capitalize. So I think set yourself up for success. Set the realistic expectation from the beginning. And ultimately tell the buyer or the seller, sorry, you're going to end up getting more money now than you could have two years ago doing this in the reverse way around. That's brilliant. I hope everyone was taking notes on that, right? It's impossible to underprice a property in a free market. Right, Nathan? Yeah. Uh, and David, James? 
everyone. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a possible, yeah but that's, I, that's genius advice. Uh, very, very smart. Now, here's a question. Uh, we have a lot of new agents uh, joining the industry. Maybe they're changing careers, uh, you know, brand new uh, in the industry. We've seen that a lot. This happens in a hot market sometimes. What, what should new agents be thinking about as they get into the business? Or in other words, maybe we could ask, like, uh, what does it take for a new agent to become successful? Any advice? Brand new agent. Adderall. No, I'm joking. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. That was a joke. Not even funny. Um, Dave, go ahead and answer it. But I, I certainly have my thoughts on that. No, I couldn't agree more. Yes, exactly. No, I think. Okay, next as, question. As a, as a new agent, as a new agent, <laughs> yeah. you got to be prepared. We put a statistic out on the blueprint, which we'll talk about shortly. Mm -hmm. um, I think real estate is the number one industry right now through COVID. The number one industry, the highest number of new people coming into the business. Mm -hmm. So if you think coming into this business is going to be easy and a quick way to make a paycheck, you're wrong. If you think you're going to coast through your next 12 months and do one deal and make 20, 30 grand and you're chilling, you're wrong. This is a business you have to come to battle every single day. You have to put in 110%. You have to be willing to work harder than the competition. Roll up your sleeves. It is a business that is cutthroat. It can be fun, but it is very competitive. And unless you are willing to give this thing 110%, my true advice is go start another career. Because if you don't give it 110%, like I said before, someone's going to come up right behind you, steal that client, take that listing, take that buyer, and they're going to be at their 110% capacity. So if you're in this business right now, when it's more competitive than it's ever been before, where other businesses are suffering that you don't want to be a part of right now, you better come to battle. You better be coming to put up your sleeves and go hard. And if you go hard and you go at 110%, there is no reason you can't be incredibly successful at this business. And that really is the only advice I can give. Well, who needs coffee? That was fantastic. Uh, David, you, uh, David, you had some thoughts on that too? No, no, I totally, I totally agree. You, you, mm -hmm. It's not going to get done for you. We've said it so many times. You've got to be willing to work harder than everyone else and work smarter than everyone else. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. Like people's biggest reason for not trying something is because they're scared of failure. They're scared of, if I screw it up, what if I mess this up? Mm -hmm. Everyone messes everything up. You cannot physically or mentally or emotionally or spiritually become successful without making a ton of mistakes. And without sounding cliche, I kind of love the line that they say success is failure turned inside out. It is. That's all it basically is. It's a series of failures that we learn. It's like being a kid again. I look at my young daughter. All she does is makes mistakes. She gets back up. She falls over. She gets back up. She, she, she learns from her mistakes. And then you just develop it. It's, it's amazing seeing it in its infancy. It's the same bloody thing, right? With anything. It's like, we're going to make mistakes. That's how we're going to learn. Do not be afraid to make mistakes. Embrace those mistakes and look at them as tokens to get to being successful. Yeah. Fantastic advice. Now, uh, I do love James. I love your breakdown on this next question. Uh, it and it's the importance of unique selling propositions or the need to differentiate yourself as a real estate agent. Can you tell us why it's so important to be different, to niche down and to have uniques? Of course. I mean, who the fuck wants to be the same as the next person, right? Okay. It's like, and, and, and again, Unless you have a unique selling point, you're just like everybody else. That's the reality, okay? You go door knocking and you're like the same stupid pitch as the next person. Why are they going to listen to you? And this is the thing we talk about over and over and over again. Be creative. Think outside of the box. Do things different to the competition. Nobody wants to work with somebody that has the exact same thing to offer as the person before them. That's boring. It's the same. And even if it's your level of energy, your level of excitement, your level of passion, you're already setting yourself apart from the person before and the person after. I don't want to work with someone that's monotoned and boring. I want to work with this guy here, David Totten, who's like buzzing in his corner right there. Rock and roll. He's clapping. He's excited. He's got energy. There's people that sit there and are very low, and that's okay. But I think you need to elevate who you are, elevate your unique selling point. Every single one of us in this Zoom has something that is unique about you that the next person doesn't have. So use that unique selling point to take you to the next level. 
right? I'm not an analytical guy. So if I rock up to a listing meeting and try and be Mr. Analytical, it's probably going to backfire or not feel organic to me. Let the, or, or let the person that is go and do that. But I do have the energy. I do have the excitement. I do have the passion and I can bring that. So I'm going to use that as my unique selling point. You might be a mother. You might be a father. You might be someone at church, a synagogue. I don't know what the hell you are or what your unique selling point is, but you have to identify who you are, what your strengths are, and go out and utilize them to your advantage to gain more business. And if you can do that in the right way and position yourself and be in the right place at the right time, the rest is history. You put in the work, you put in the time, you find out your unique selling point. There is no reason that you can't be successful at this business. And again, and I know we're going to talk about it, but if each and every one of you go to readtheblueprint.com, it's a newsletter, it's free. We put it out, I think, twice a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. We talk about all of this twice a week. And this is why we did it, because we're passionate about where we came from to where we are today. And we wanted to share it with other agents that are in our business. So, you know, I'm telling you, find your unique selling point, have excitement and, and go get it. Oh, man, I, I love that breakdown. I, you and I have talked about that before. I, I just love the way you talk about that. Uh, so th I think that's important. Hopefully everybody's taking notes. Uh, now, let's just, before we talk about the blueprint specifically, uh, I just want to ask you about social media. Uh, you guys do really well with that. You're very consistent. Um, any advice or solid tips for utilizing social media? What should agents be thinking about? Dave, you want to answer that or I'm happy to? No, go for it. Go for it. Social media is the same as door knocking. If you're not consistent with it, don't bother doing it at all. You know, social media is something that you have to do consistently. You have to find out what your brand is, what your brand is about. If you're going to post about real estate, make sure that you're posting about good topics of information, share knowledge, be a wealth of information to your clientele. If you're going to do Instagram lives, make sure you're doing it once a week at the same time. If you're going to post about real estate, make sure that you're preparing yourself with the right tags, positioning yourself and learning to post at the right times. Engage Engage with your audience. Always engage with the people. Find out what questions they're asking. Make sure to respond to those questions. Make sure that the information you're putting out is relevant. If you're a new agent in the business and you don't have 15 listings, then find out what else you can post that might be relevant to your sphere of influence. But remain consistent with it at all times and make it consistent with your brand, who you are and what you want to put out. But again, this business is about remaining consistent no matter what you do. So if you're going to do it, do it on a consistent level, what's comfortable to you. Yeah, no, fantastic advice. Um, okay, uh, what are we going to expect for the rest of 2022? Or what do you expect for the rest of 2022? Any bold predictions? I think it's going to be very, very strong. I actually think 2022 is going to be even stronger and already has proven itself than 2021. There is, especially in LA, pent up demand, right? When you're looking at one property that has 30 offers, 40 offers on it, only one buyer is going to prevail. That basically means that 29, 39 other buyers are still ready, willing, and able to purchase a property and still looking right? So that kind of pent up demand is huge. Now, I know someone mentioned that the supply is actually uh, increasing now where you guys are. That's great news because that just creates more opportunity for, 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 for agents representing buyers, right? That's like a dream. It's like, give us more inventory, give us more product to sell, right? So, so I'm kind of envious of that, which is why I actually asked that question. Um, I hope that inventory uh, freeze up in LA because that's really going to help us. Um, so I would say from, from your guys' perspective, if inventory is freeing up, the money's there, the demand's there, the rates are still low, go for it. Just mm -hmm. go for it and, and make as much, I think James had mentioned, make as much money as you can. Do as many deals as you can right now while things are hot. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's a, uh, yeah, it seems reasonable uh, for the rest of 2022. Uh, final question before we ask about the blueprint specifically, uh, what do agents need to be doing right now to take advantage of uh, 2022 and beyond? Is there one thing that an agent needs to focus on? If off the top of your head, what's one thing they should be focusing on? 
Working <laughs> their ass off. <laughs> but I, 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 <laughs> there's nothing else. But guys, it's open houses. It's door knocking. It's mm-hmm. being consistent. It's remembering this is a listings driven business. Go get listings. Go focus. And I'm telling you, push the gas and work harder now than you've ever worked before. Because you're all going to be feeling sorry for yourselves fast forward a year from now if the market doesn't look the same way. You're all going to be saying Mm. to each other, I wish I took advantage of the market when it was like this, you know, and I don't want to be a pessimistic guy, but markets are cyclical. They go up, they go down. That's just the world we live in. It's the reality we live in. Right now, we're moving up. Even if it's softening in Canada, it's still rocking. Rates are still lower than they were five years ago. Inventory is still tighter than it was five years ago. Go out and take advantage of the market right, right, right now. That's good. David? Totally. Yeah. I mean, you just got to I would focus right now on 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 listings and and preparing your buyers for you know potential multiples. I think just you know hard work is a given in any market in any industry. But I totally agree with James. You know, especially when it's there for the taking, you've got to push yourself harder than ever. Um, but I think just you know keep your eye on the ball. Stay yeah. in the lane. Don't get tempted to to pull a fast one and and take a shortcut. They don't work, okay? The only things that work long time, long term are hard work, staying in your lane, being ethical, and treating your clients like they're your family. That's it. You know, every time I do that, I'm like, what would I say to my mom? What would I want from this transaction? Put it out there. I swear on my life, mark my words, that amount, that energy you're putting out, that, 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 that consideration you're putting back will pay you back tenfold, even if you are doing it for selfish reasons. You're going to feel good as well. Great advice. Now, listen, everyone, all of this and more is actually covered in the newsletter blueprint. Now, I know, James, you touched on it there for a minute. Uh, What's the story behind or the genesis of this project? And uh, what's the goal behind it here? I mean, it's really simple. Um, You know, it's like here we are two dudes from London that hadn't really had a clue about what was going on in the real estate market when we started, right? And now we fast forward to today, we got a wealth of information, a wealth of knowledge, um, and we wanted to put it out there. We really did. So we decided that we were going to share this information with the world. And twice a week, the whole premise here is that you wake up in on Tuesday, you wake up on Friday, you take two to five minutes to read the blueprint and you go out and have a better day. Or you learn mm-hmm. one thing in that newsletter that helped you better yourself as an agent in that day. And, you know, when we were setting it up, we were toying with how do we go about the approach of this? We said, we want to do it for free. We want to give back to the other agents, we want to give back to the community. We want to put out good information. We want to build it and see where it goes. And so every Tuesday, every Friday, the blueprint comes out. Um, and I'm hoping that you read one thing that's relevant to you in that newsletter and it yeah. makes you go out and be a better agent that day. Also, I would say, and, and, and you know, the inspiration is like, there's so much news out there, right? Some mm-hmm. of it's relevant, some of it's irrelevant. And, and when I was a new agent, when we were new agents, I'd always want to think like, okay, what do I do here? What, what do I, with all this news, what is relevant? What isn't relevant? What, what is the, one of the top agents think about this at the time will be like, Mauricio, what do you think he would make of this, right? So all we've done is we've selected the articles twice a week that we feel are most relevant and given our take on it. Mm-hmm. And it's so concise. It's so easy. And it's basically, yeah. it's there. It's what we always wanted. And I, I, I feel that we're kind of giving that back and hopefully, hopefully people will find it useful. Well, I went through it and I was impressed, actually. It's, it's a quick read off, but really punchy and relevant. Uh, I loved it. I, I, I've been in the business a long time and I've seen, you know, hundreds of newsletters. It's one of the best ones I've seen. Nice, simple, Appreciate punchy. Uh, you know, the headlines are very, very relevant. So everybody go sign up there. It's a uh, read. What is it? Read blueprint.com. Is that it? Yeah. It's just www.readtheblueprint.com and share feedback with us, you know, yep. and, and refer it to your friends. Um, I think we have some really cool referral programs and perks, actually. Um, So send us an email. We'll we'll happily tell you more about that. And Mm -hmm. David, I know I say this every single time we talk, but I love what you're doing for your agents. I I, I respect you uh, to the highest. I wish we 
did more of what you do here, but you you do. You take care of your agent since the day I met you. You've been consistent with this podcast, consistent with everything you're doing. And for anyone else that follows all these people doing what David's doing, nobody comes with the graphics and the sounds that he does. I love it. When I know I'm going up, I can't wait to repost his stuff because there's some great hip hop, cool graphics, and you're, you're truly providing a, a, a service, I have to assume, that goes head and shoulders above other brokerages out in Canada. So uh, if, you're, if you're on David's team there at GPG, good for you guys. And David, good for you, man, for putting out everything you do. Oh, man, I appreciate those words, James. Uh, uh, no, thank you for having us. It means a lot. And, and you guys are awesome. And just, you know, it's, we're all in the same boat at the end of the day, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, 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 if, if we look at ourselves as one big group, one big team, it's a very powerful concept. And, and, and thank you, David. Yeah, I, I, I echo James's sentiment. A hundred percent. So thank you for having us all. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, everyone, uh, you want to give, you can unmute, give a big round of applause uh, for giving up the time. I know James had to move some appointments today to be here. So big thank you to James. Uh, uh, Chris, any updates or uh, Len? No, great job, boys. As usual, that was really good. So thank you for that. I hope people don't realize People don't realize, James, and all those guys, we're honored. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Much appreciated, guys. I'm going to check out, but I hope everyone has an unbelievable week. And uh, we look forward to connecting with all of you again soon. Thanks Thanks again, James. Great day. Thank you. Thank you all. Take care. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.